So if you know about 2D arrays, then let's try out a mock test where we practice our use of 2D arrays. And this is part one of this 2D array mock test for grade 12 RT. So let's look at the scenario. You are required to complete code for event handlers to analyze a treatment center for patients that are infected by a virus. And there's a 2D array called array rooms, which is an eight by five, which has numbers that represent the number of beds in each room of eight floors of a treatment center. And there are five rooms on every story of an eight story treatment center. So that's why there's a five or eight by five grid. The treatment center is divided into, into two sections. There's level one, which is the first four stories, which is rows one to four. These only have a maximum of four beds in each room. And then level two, which is the last four stories. These only take one bed. Obviously, that's the more serious cases. So if we look at the question one, they want to start off with a procedure, create a procedure called display array that will display the values in the rooms array in a string grid called SGD rooms. And we must call this procedure on the form create. Now normally when they ask us to create a procedure like this displaying a grid or values in of the array in a string grid, it's normally because we're going to need to do that multiple times in the program. So let's get straight to it. So we're going to make a display array procedure. There's nothing that's being asked as a parameter. So we're going to go straight to our question over here and we're going to go to the code over here. Let's go all the way to the top and here we're going to make a procedure called display array. You could have made this public as well or private display array I mean display area and we can press control shift C and here we have the code for the display area so we want to display the values in the array so let's just double check what it looks like so we want to display it like that so there's no fixed rows and there's no fixed heading so that block is zero zero in our string grid but in our array it's one comma one so we must take note of that when we are displaying so let's go have a look at it. we're going to have an array that goes from five to eight so we need an r variable and a j variable of type integer and we're going to go for r equal one to eight it doesn't actually matter which one we do first when we're doing everything and then i'm going to do another loop for j equal one to five do and we are displaying in the string grid rooms dot cells then it's columns and rows remember that's columns and rows and that's going to equal whatever the value is in array rooms in rows and columns remember arrays are different to the string grid string grid is columns and then rows and then this would be rows and then columns so things to take note of so first of all let's just double check on our diagram you can see that there are eight rows and there are five columns so therefore there are eight rows which means r will go over there and there are five columns so the, the j will go over there because the j goes to five and the r goes to eight and for our array it would be the other way around it will be r and then j and you can double check that the first value goes to eight the second value goes to five if i move up here you can see it goes from one to five one to eight and then one to five now just take note of something this is one to eight and this will be one one for the very first time but that's not what we want here we don't have one to eight over here we've got zero one two three four five six seven and we've got zero one two three four so it's not actually going from one to eight here it's going to one to eight instead of one to eight it's going to zero to seven so that's a minus one to that r value and the same to the j value so that when we go from one one to eight here this is going from zero to seven so when we go from one to eight over there here we're going from zero to seven and whenever we go from one to five there we're going from zero to four so that will be the display and then we want to convert this array value because remember it's an array of integers don't forget that it's an array of integers and this is a string grid convert it from an int to a string so that it can fit into the string grid and then on the form create which i think is right here at the bottom we're just going to call that display display area procedure just call it like it is so that when it loads we should see the values straight away in the string grid so there we go you can see that it's displayed nicely in the grid it looks exactly like it is in the diagram if you look here it looks exactly the same so there we go so that's the first question done let's go to question two Question two, complete the code for BTNQ2 that displays the total number of patients that are in the treatment center. So I assume that's the number of beds that are being occupied. So therefore, we're just going to add up all the numbers in the string grid. So let's try that. Let's go add up all the numbers in the string grid. We're going to come here to our code. Let's double click on the button. And we've already got an I and a J variable. It might actually be easier for you to remember to make this an R row and an R column. 
that might make your life a bit easier so we're going to have a sum variable because we're adding up numbers and whenever you have a sum variable you're always going to initialize it to zero and you're going to loop for i equal let's call it r row if we add up everything it doesn't matter if we do the rows or the columns first so if you remember correctly we're not working with the string grid we're working with the array so be very careful of adding up the values in the string grid because this is not a string grid question this is an array question so just remember that the rows is first and that goes to eight so there are eight rows so we're going to go from one to eight and then we are going to go for our call goes from one to five and we're not doing any checks so we're simply going to go our sum we're going to add on to our sum we're going to add on the value from the array not the string grid the array array rooms and remember arrays have rows first then columns and once that is done we are going to display that value in a show message there are currently 63 patients being treated so show message i'm going to write the text quickly so there's the two pieces of text that we're going to put around our sum variable. So we're going to put our, our sum variable in between. They are currently with the number. Remember, this is an integer. So we convert it from an int to a string so I can fit into the show message. And then let's run it. So if we click on that button, there are 63 patients. And that's the same number that we get in our example over there. Let's move on to question number three. Question number three, complete the code that displays the number of rooms that are empty. And a room is empty if there's zero patients in the center. So we can see there are a couple of zero rooms. There are four of them. Yes, there are four. So let's do that question. We're just going to count how many rooms have zero patients in. So let's go to the button. Double click on the button. Again, we're going to change those to our call and our row. That would make my life a bit easier. And again, we're not working with the string group. We're working with the array. So I'm going to have a count variable. So let's make our Dracula variable, our count Dracula variable. And we initialize count to a zero. We're going to loop. Again, in this case, we're doing the entire array. So it doesn't matter whether I do the columns first or the rows first. But remember, columns, there are five columns. And rows, there are eight rows. And it doesn't matter which one comes first in this case but if we were doing something row by row or column by column then it would make a difference and if the value in the array at position r row comma r call that equals a zero then we have a room that is empty then we're going to increase that count variable and that's all we need to do and then we can show message at the end after the loop is done we're going to show message there are how many empty rooms so there are four empty rooms but instead of that four over there we're going to put a quote quote and then put a plus plus and then in between the pluses we'll put our, our count variable that we want to display but this is an integer that we want to convert to a string because we've got a show message quick and easy let's see how that works and we will display the number of empty rooms and there are four empty rooms and that's correct because they're the four of them so that's question number three to download the data files or to see the links to the other videos, look in the video description. You'll find everything you need there. Leave a like, leave a comment, and please subscribe to support the channel. Follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.